Hello there. Since 1977, the Crucible Theatre has been bringing us the kind of edge of the seat, slow burning tension that's kept many of us watching our TV sets glued to the action until the wee hours of the morning. Now, many rivalries have engaged our imagination, and none more so, perhaps, in the 1990s anyway, than that featuring the ruthless brilliance of Stephen Hendry up against the colourful, ever popular, intuitive Jimmy Whirlwind White. Now, by the time these two squared up in the final of 1994, Jimmy was appearing in his fifth final in a row and sixth in total. And by this point, Hendry, the 25-year-old, was a major thorn in his side. In fact, they were squaring up now in their fourth Crucible final and the third in a row. I think I said to Jimmy one in the practice room before the final, we're both practicing um, and having won our semi-finals and he says it's like maybe the other, the other 30 players shouldn't turn up because they seem to have been in the final every year. Yeah, they were very familiar with one another at the Crucible, all right. But there was one element that was different this year. Hendry had played the entire fortnight with a fractured arm after a bathroom fall. Indeed, he'd kept his arm in a sling away from the match table. But the injury certainly hadn't seemed to impede his progress. In fact, he set off on a real mission, surging into a 3-1 lead in the early stages of this final. And we're going to pick them up in frame five. Uh, Hendry's trailing 13 points to 24 and he's eyeing up a tricky pot to the middle pocket. Oh, what a result. Nine. So Stephen now two points behind. You certainly have to make him favourite. Don't wish for the Reds to be better situated. Ten. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he doesn't go on and win the frame at this visit. Twenty-two. That takes the lead to eighteen points. Twenty-nine. Thirty. And I'm sure Jimmy thought that uh, he'd left Stephen in a load of trouble when he left the table. Yes, Ray, in fact, he, uh, he had... 37. ...under a tremendous red that started this 
break off which is required the two reds and two colors down this end of the table 38 to leave Jimmy needing snookers Forty five. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty-one. I think this uh, capacity audience are a little stunned at the moment. I think that they thought it could be Jimmy's day today, and he started off so well, but, well, the form of his opponent, the world 50. champion, has been something special so far. Fifty-five. But there is a long way to go. Things can change. Sixty-two. Sixty-seven. Seventy-three. So from nothing. An 80 clearance 80 increases frame, Stephen, Henry. Stephen Henry's lead to four frames to one. He had this great persona around him of getting into his bubble and, you know, nothing affected him, nothing put him off. You know, he was, uh, I don't know where he got that from, but that was sort of in his armoury. Well, obviously, I was the number one player in the world and, 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 and having the world, won, won the world championship, um, I think, two years previously as well. I won in 92, 93. So... I was at a stage in my career where I, where I almost took for granted winning the World Championship. I was that confident. There's a bit of desperation about that shot, but if he can make that pay, what a difference that'll make to this match. Still needs a good blue. Looking at the black, but I don't think he'll take it. Blue ball. A good shot. Six. Now, can he get through to the red to the left corner? I don't think so. This shouldn't be a problem to the right. Seven. Yes, and suddenly that little bit of running seems to have changed. Now, Jimmy back in prime position. You would certainly expect an inform Jimmy White to go on now and clinch the frame. He's 34 points in front.
21. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Yes, do you mean just to overhit that one? So you'll be screwing into the reds near the pink now to hold for the red over the left corner. That bottom red must 35. pass into the corner. So now 56 points in front. 36. Just colour on one more red. Well, surely not. All the space at this end of the table to drop onto a red. Well, as you see there, it's very tight. The one to the right middle. The queuing is awkward. Yes, but Ray, it was a strange choice of shot. He could have stunned the blue between yellow and brown, back down the table for this red over the corner pocket. You only needed the one red. Obviously thinks he can get this. And that's it. That will make him feel better. Well, I'm sure Jimmy a few moments ago was thinking here we go again Stephen Hendry producing his very best form feeling of deja vu we've been here before but well, Stephen will know that uh, he's still got a match on his hands and Jimmy will take positive thoughts with him after this uh, end of this session. Okay. 63. But although the balls were there to be potted, this has been a great effort from Jimmy because he really was facing a 6-1 deficit, which Jimmy White. was really a big one, but nevertheless, he pinches the last frame of this session. He trails at five frames to two. Of course, that was an important frame for Jimmy to win. Two five behind, but still in touch after a session that was largely dominated by the younger man. But it did seem to give Jimmy a huge amount of confidence, so much so that he reeled off five frames on the bounce to now lead the contest 7-5. We'll rejoin them in frame 13. Henry to play, no score. The shot's more difficult than he intended. Made a nice little cannon to hold the white, but he missed that red by quite a margin. It didn't even get into the jaws. Stevens not potting anything like he has been right through this championship.
one. Good shot. Six. Red is on to the right or the left corner from the right side of the table. It's the reason Jimmy drew the white ball there, but he's not going f forward for the black. He's going back to the blue. Seven. And he's on the right side to position back to the reds. corner appears to be on. It was a good shot from Jimmy. He came in there in perfect position. 30. Just 28. picking off that odd red and having removed that, of course, 29. he's opened the corner pocket to the line of reds there. And now removing the offending red. 36. And I think he's a fraction short on that blue. And that was fairly important because he would have had a nice plain sailing shot just to run through and be sitting on all those reds. Two reds to the left of the cluster are clearly on. Jimmy's 42. had a couple of looks at the two reds by the pink. No, he's not taking those reds. They can't be on, but this one certainly is. <laughs> and he put the other red into a nice position over the middle pocket. Yes, Jimmy has uh, excellent concentration at the moment. As I said previously, he's, he's taking a little longer on his shots and it's nice to see. 48. <coughs> Played for the pink. Now he'll try and push one or two of those reds out into potable positions. Fifty-four. Well, he didn't have to disturb the reds. It's nicely on for the corner. Oh my 
my goodness. Jimmy White, 54. It's a little bit careless from Jimmy. He was in perfect position. Six. Seven. Well, if Stephen can uh, make full use of this and manage to clear up. It's the sort of effort that might well bring him back on song. He's had 14. quite a long period now where he's been total disorientated oh and that was a kick and he's fortunately got away with it yes Nepean cares to split the two reds by the pink he's, has a nice angle on the black here to do it Red closest to the blue is Cutterbill to the middle pocket. All three reds are potable, none of them all that easy though. He's got to play a good shot now, particularly to keep the cue ball under control. pocket to play his best positional shot on the pink. Nice angle now to drop onto the black. 30. Everything's looking rosy here, and I bet Jim is kicking his heels at the moment. I bet he's a little bit uh, peeved, missing that easy shot. 37. Good positional shot. 37. Particularly now if he can get to the blue. He'll have a saloon passage run to the yellow. He looks just a little anxious there. Through a frame away. Yes, nice amount of check on that to cue ball leaves him sitting on the blue on the pink rather and that's it so that's stopping the rock there Stephen Henry pulls one back it's seven frames to six. So 
Stephen now needing green and the brown. Well, that was a cracking pot and perhaps a trifle unlucky to slip between the two balls there. Kiss might have uh, given him a better opportunity than this. So 22 points on the table and Jimmy, if he can take these, can pinch the frame. Yes, the brown is certainly not easy. I play for a snooker here. Well, I thought he'd have taken the white ball to the corner, not the brown. This is quite potable for Stephen now. Well, Jimmy looked quite <laughs> distressed at what he'd done with the brown, but lo and behold, it's done him a favour. What a strange game this is. He's got about five feet between the blue and the cue ball. This will be a big, big screw. And that looks almost perfect. And I would think Stephen will be annoyed. So in goes the black, and Jimmy White will score the lead, eight frames to six. Perfect on the blue. Six. <coughs> Stephen will be trying to make a nice angle on the black to split the three reds by the pink. Yes, and that looks Seven. in ideal position to do it. He still has the two single reds. There may even be one of the three reds by the pink on for the left corner. Decided to go into them, and is he lucky enough to be on the one to the middle pocket? 14. Yes, he's getting down to it. Twenty-one. 
28. And there you heard 29. probably the gasp of Stephen. Gasp of disappointment and dismay. Cue ball kicked. So now he's faced with 36. a tricky red here. It'll go in the center pocket, but it's partially a blind pocket. And he might well take it in the corner. And that's a brilliant shot. Suggest he'll take this red on to the 44. right corner. Could be a frame winner for sure if he can make this one. Good pot call for though, it's not easy. 45. Fifty-two. Fifty-four. So a frame again that uh, Stephen had to really work hard for and badly needed. Sixty-one. Sixty-six. Stephen Henry. Sixty-six. Thank you. So the end of frame. The frame that Stephen has won, and he's pulled one back to eight-seven in favour of Jimmy White. Well, this final was turning out to be everything that we hoped it would be: fascinating and swinging to and fro. They shared the next couple of frames, 9-8 now, as we pick them up again in frame 18. Stephen regularly finds the bolt cushion with his safety shots. as if he's covered it but there's one red that'll pot into the right corner not the uh, one nearest the pocket the one to the right of it Uh, place the cue ball too good and it's dead straight. Six. Once again, as we've seen so many times from the break-off shot, that red goes just to the right of the black and just causes a slight problem. But I think
think Stephen can get onto that uh, black if he just brings the cue ball back a little bit. Pink's also available if he doesn't judge that one right. I think he might just get through to the black there. Very close thing. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. First frame, it's certainly given Stephen Hendry a lot of confidence. Seems to be queuing very smoothly. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Well, this positional play at the moment is absolutely spot on. There's the uh, breaks in the final so far for Stephen Hendry, that is. Seven over 50, no centuries yet. this frame of course to level the match 61 
you can see there is a possible 136 on if he took blacks with these reds. 62. 68 in front now. Just a possible 67 on the table, so Stephen Hendry can relax 68. a little bit and see if he can make his first century. All Jimmy can do is sit and watch. 69. Seventy-five. Eighty-two. Eighty three. A world champion at work. Eighty nine. This is tough. Can't give him that, but we can give him the frame. He's leveled the match. They're nine frames each. Six. Seven. Well, maybe a bit of a bad contact there, but uh, he's okay, even if he's straight on the blue. He's got the uh, loose red there to the right of the pink. would pass the red. That's what Jimmy was having a look at there, but it looks pretty tight from our... can't really see from that angle. Thirty. Well, there's your answer. Just checking to see if the pink will in fact spot. It won't. And as you can see, Ted, the angle 90. we've just seen there, the black definitely wouldn't pot. 20. 
20. Twenty-five. Another bad contact there, Jimmy felt. This is a good response from Jimmy White. He only played one shot, really, in the last frame, and that was a bad safety shot. Had to sit it out then. Twenty-six. Now, I wonder if he can move this nuisance red here. It appears so. 34. 41. Well, we keep saying it, but this is the important shot coming up. Nice angle. If he gets a lucky split on the reds, great chance of the frame. 49. 49. And all to go for. A red into the centre. Fifty-seven. Fifty-eight. Well, Ted, Stephen Hendry at an 89 in the last frame. Jimmy's responded. This could be one terrific final we're in for. It could be a complete classic. Stephen's turn to sit in the chair. All the reds this end of the table. Sixty three. Sixty four. be brilliant 71 if both players played to the best of the form on this final day seems to me Dennis they are Seventy-seven. He knows the frame is gone. <laughs> Caught the other wrong red first. A signal from Stephen Hendry.
And Jimmy White is back in the lead at 10 frames to 9. Well, Jimmy took the next frame to restore his two frames advantage, 11-9 now. And many of his adoring fans who'd gone through the agonies of watching him lose five finals in the past were beginning to believe it might just be his year. Into frame 21 now. Jimmy, 20 points behind. It's a pressure shot. Nausey will be leaving Stephen should he miss it. Well, that's, uh, this is a gift now then. And this is the sort of situation where Stephen really excels. One. Doesn't look to have the angle on the red 16. hole for the black, so it'll be down for the blue or pink. Seventeen. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. So now leaving the perfect angle on the black just to drop the black in and red into the same corner pocket. So a 44 point lead. Got to be a good chance here for Stephen. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. No choice of two reds, the one to the right of the pink or the 39. one near the, near the right hand side cushion. Just the black and one more red required. Forty seven. Forty eight. Well, not quite the angle on the blue to stun into the pack of reds. I don't think any will pot, so I might be coming directly off the side cushion into the pack or I may try and stun down with a lot of left hand side on the white to come round the angles and split the reds. looking there is looking to see if that middle red will go into the green pocket. Fifty three. Well, didn't disturb them, so I think that's now end of break.
Stephen Hendry. <laughs> And that break was enough for Stephen to come within one frame of Jimmy once again at 10 frames to 11. Into the next we go, and it's Hendry at the table early on. Jimmy get through to the red, just the bottom of the pack there. Doesn't appear so. Well, he can. And this could be a great chance now for Jimmy. <laughs> and of course, confidence will be a bit higher now after missing that previous black. Let Stephen in and suddenly he's let off the hook, so... Might put a few points together here now. Eight. Manley was looking for the rub of the green there, but uh, he hasn't had it. But I must say that I think we're seeing quite a different Jimmy White this year. <coughs> I'm sure he won't mind me saying that he's been first class in his attitude this year. He's got his head down in the evening. He's been a good lad. Yes, and if he pots this, Jack, he will be having the rub of the green. <laughs> and that's the sort of position where, although he looked to be unlucky, once he's potted the ball, it's turned out better for him. Well, again, that's a bad miss. And just look at the Jimmy reds here. And Jimmy hangs his head and thinks, what have I done? And, of course, this frame is like all frames are big frames, but... Stephen now has a chance to make it all square. Every ball on the table is 16. Near a pocket. And of course, this is just the sort 17. of uh, exercise that uh, will give Stephen confidence and perhaps get his shooting boots on again. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Yes, and Stephen making Jimmy pay for that bad miss. I think it's very important against a player of Jimmy's type, aggressive, break building, 33. that you have to punish him for his mistakes, undermine his confidence. <coughs> and with 
the position of the balls now, I would certainly expect Stephen 40. to go on and clinch the frame at this visit. Well, he's watching, tense, but concentrating hard. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Now thirty-seven point the difference. So colour, red colour would be sufficient to leave Jimmy Needing snookers. So now it's just a matter of can he clear the board? Yes, it's funny, Jack. I just said that. Hadn't been a century break. 67. Certainly a good chance here. 68. Needs the blue. Which would make just a hundred on the table. Quite high enough up the table, but trace of right hand side would hold for the green. 75. 78. 82. <coughs> So, are we going to see the first century? Which gives no indication of the uh, quality of the match. It has been absolutely superb. Both players trying to break one another, and as yet, they haven't succeeded. But Stephen takes the frame, and it's now 11 frames all. Do you believe this? Oh, good oh. heavens above. Stephen Henry, four. Well. Well, you can only say that is pure carelessness. Jimmy only wanted the brown to win the frame. Didn't have to play for the blue. And can't say that's bad luck. The white shouldn't have been anywhere near the centre pocket. Well, he's got to uh, try and get that out of his mind. And that has come, well, Nine. just a trifle. Uh, Stephen just waggles his head there and thinks, well, that wasn't good enough. And he wants both balls. left it well would you believe this so Jimmy White comes to the table for the second time and he smiles this time just needs the pink well it's in and he takes the lead by 12 frames to 11
By the end of that afternoon session, it was dead level. 12 frames all with a possible 11 to come in the evening. As they waited backstage, the world number one, Hendry, knew he'd be staying there for another year after his victory over Steve Davis in the semi-final earlier. But the whirlwind, still seeking the ultimate prize, knowing what damage this young man had inflicted upon him over the last couple of years. Two years earlier in the final session, Hendry had come from behind to win 10 frames in a row to destroy his chances then. Would things change this time. In we go to the first frame of that final session and it's Hendry at the table, 26 points in front. Thank you gentlemen. This could make a difference. Jimmy comes to the table, 26 points behind. This first frame this evening, the fun final session, and what an important frame this is. Yeah. Well, it's isn't it? The colour on the table safe, so it's only a matter of Jimmy keeping this cue ball under control now. And he should take the frame from here. Six. Points behind. Once both pink and black. Now, does Jimmy have an angle on this pink to get to the black? <coughs> He's drawing back. No, that's not what he intended. No, he had a lot of side on that uh, cue ball, but it wasn't sufficient. He wanted to kick it towards the right-hand centre pocket. So our first frame finishes up all on the black. He's had a go. It's not there. But he's got the cue ball under the cushion at the top now. It'll be interesting to see if Stephen takes this black on. It's a good 10 feet away. He's hard up on the top cushion. It was a great try, but a very difficult queuing, as you saw. He could hit very little of the cue ball, just the top of it. So Jimmy White then, with the black at his mercy, and the first frame of the final session, the raw goes up for Jimmy White as he goes back into the lead at 13 frames to 12. So Jimmy with his nose in front once again, but back came the Scot as he's done so often. Three frames in a row rattled them off to lead 15-13 at the mid-session interval. Back they came again. This time, it's Jimmy to break. So, time for Jimmy White to turn the tide. He's lost four of the last five frames.
So the pressure is still showing out there. Stephen missed out by quite some distance. Jimmy here is going to go into the pike. Straighter would have made it easier to control his position, but still should be all right. Forty. I think this is the difference with Jimmy this year. Previous years, you would already have played the pot. Now he's taking that little bit more care. Obviously, he couldn't get on the red to hold for the black, so. 38. Right into the corner now, down for the blue. The tension has been such in the first four frames that the highest break so far has been 39. There have been a lot of mistakes, but it has been exciting. Yes, and this is decision time for Jimmy. Could go into the pike, but he's looking at a red into the left-hand left corner. Or is it the plant at the bottom? I think it's the plant at the bottom. 44. And there is a gap between the two reds. So this is a crucial shot for Jimmy. Will be perfect on the black should he get it. frame one in clean cut fashion tonight. They've all ended up the struggles on the later balls. This is a chance for White to win this one more authoritatively. Yes and this 52. is going to be a big shot now. 
Certainly not easy along the back rail here. Of course, that previous shot he played has opened up the path for the two reds above the black into the right-hand corner. Sixty. Sixty-one. Five. I just have a feeling this is going to be a big one. 69. Already put the frame safe. 76. <laughs> 77. £15,400 is never a side issue. That's what the highest break is. White can't beat it, but he can take a share of it. 92. 92. Yeah, so that was a clever shot from Jimmy. Played that in such a way he knew he'd be on the blank. One hundred and one. One thing for sure, Clive, I'm pretty certain Jimmy won't be taking any other colour off that last red other than the blank. Already, this century, the, the 35th at the Crucible this year, equals the Crucible record. And this is a tough one, going to have to play it with a lot of bottom and right on side. And he's played that super. Yeah. 116. And you would think, Clive, the only ball that could cause him any problems now would be that pink near the left-hand cushion. He fails at the yellow, but uh, his break of 116 narrows the gap to a single frame. Stephen Hensley leads by 15 frames to 14. Yeah, quite a pressure break from Jimmy, wasn't it? To, uh, to remain within touching distance of Hendry. But the Scot took the next to restore his two-frame advantage, 16-14 now. And as we head into frame 31, it's Stephen in front by 22 points. <laughs> Double kiss was unintended, chance for White, but not easy at that range. Yes, and a little thinner than he would have liked. Going to be very difficult to hold for the green. It looks simple, but I can assure you that was one of the best shots Jimmy will ever play. He needs to clear to win. Nine.
14. It looks as though he's gone the only place that he can't get good position on the black. Wanted to be another six inches down the table. So this frame isn't over yet. Yes, if he'd been further out of position, i.e. six inches shorter, he would still have been all right. Twenty. <coughs> Is he going to try and cut this in? He's walked round to have a look at it, so I would say there's no doubt he's going to try this. What nerve! Jimmy White cleared the colours to win the frame on the black and again trails only by one frame. Stephen Hendry leads by 16 frames to 15. We're coming down towards the black. Give me pots this. No time to risk the black to the middle, which, if it had gone in, would have left white needing a snooker. Actually, I'm getting too excited. That wouldn't have been the case. Yes, I just haven't a clue what Jimmy was playing there. It looks as though he was trying to hit the mm -hmm. red direct off the left cushion. But the blue seems to be blocking that path. Right. Okay. I thought he would have to go off two cushions. Foul. Stephen Hendry, four. And a free ball, is it? No. It may not be. It's close. Free ball. It is a free ball. So that could be the end for Jimmy. 32 points in front, Stephen. In actual fact, I can't believe this for sportsmanship. <laughs> the referee has given a free ball to Stephen and Stephen is querying it, asking the referee to check it. What a sportsman. No, no. Well, that was marvellous. To be a free ball, the player Mustn't be a, must be able to hit both edges of the red, and Hendry just can. Yes, but Clive, what, what other sport would you see that? The referee gave the foul, gave the free ball, and Stephen, against his own chance of winning the tournament, refused to take it. What a reward. White hits his safety all wrong and flukes a snooker. Well, this looks unfortunate. A good hit from Stephen. And that blue will go past the green then it's perfect for Jimmy.
One. Twenty-six points in it. Twenty-seven on the Six. table. And is this another twist live? Eight. It certainly looks like it. <clears throat> Hendry won't be expecting to get another shot this frame. This to level the match. Yeah. Great sportsmanship by Hendry, a cool clearance by White. Level at 16 all. Level with three to play. And amidst great excitement and drama, Hendry took the next to move to within just one frame of successfully defending his title and winning the trophy for a fourth time. But would Jimmy White still have a say in this epic final? On this, his 32nd birthday. This is frame 34 of a possible 35. That white coming in and out of box just tells you the players are really pumped up now. The adrenaline's really flowing. It's so easy just to overhit the shot slightly. hand side of the Reds, Stephen here, so uh, may have to find the safety area this end of the table. But he's left half a chance to the right middle. Maybe even a cut to the corner, the red to the right of the black. That's a cracking pot. Jimmy knows now one mistake, <coughs> but he won't even be thinking about that.
six. <laughs> I'm quite rightly read, Jimmy taking his time. Normally he'd be straight down, knock the red in, but he's composing himself. Yes, I think he's pretty well done that throughout this championship, Dennis. Quickened up the odd time under pressure. That's perfectly natural. Now wants a bit of luck. And I think that, that could have been better. Or maybe that red goes to the right corner. Well, just look at that, another fraction, and he would have been absolutely perfect. It's amazing how you can cannon into the reds like that and not leave yourself an easy pot. Yes, I think it's important that Jimmy does take that bit of time now and does nothing desperate. Jimmy White, 10. Patience might pay him. shot from Jimmy there. He's blocked the path down the right side of the table. <coughs> well, there's some more sportsmanship for you. J Jimmy just tapping the table, acknowledging that excellent safety. Played with so much side. Still thinking positively. <coughs> Took that one on with a certain degree of confidence that he wouldn't leave Jimmy too easy a pot, but there's a half chance here. <laughs> and half chances at this stage very difficult to take. Yeah, he was a little unfortunate there just to flick the blue, Ray. He would have been nicely on the green or the yellow. He's having to uh, use the rest now. Surely he hasn't finished in a position where he can't pot a red again. Mm, I think he has, Dennis. I don't think he can get for the red that's uh, nicely for the right corner. He may get to the one 
that's uh, just out of picture to the left of the pink. of this man is just unbelievable. Black are not very nicely placed there. Ten. Fifteen. This time, Jimmy's going to bring the pink into play, and uh, well, we've seen one or two of these missed. Just a little bit tricky. Twenty-two. But that does open things up very nicely for Jimmy White. final we have on our hands here. Yes, I think it's the courage of both players. Stephen has shown tremendous courage in this match and so has his opponent. 29. And it's going to be a great pity whichever one loses, but someone has to. Yes, Ray, if it had been boxing, I'm sure it would be a draw. there but uh, the black was always there as a backup he needs the extension to get to it <coughs> you've got to screw the white back a couple of feet just to get nice position on the red Two points in front, straight red. 42. To the right middle, pink awaiting. What a chance. Forty-nine. 
55. Stephen knows he's in for a nail-biting last frame. 62. 63. It's fair to say that he does always look <coughs> after the first session as if this match was going to go to the wire, but uh, nobody thought it would be quite as close as this, Dennis. 69. Yeah, it's just amazing, Ray. 70. Seventy-five. He won't be bothered whether the red goes in or not. Jimmy White, seventy-five. And the play. Well, the crowd wanted it in. Didn't matter to Stephen or Jimmy. But down to the very last frame now. Seventeen frames apiece. Obviously, seventeen all. It can go either way. But obviously, when I, when you get to a final, the crucible that goes to the final frame, that's uh, quite special. And a nice handshake and a nice smile. Final frame, ladies and gentlemen, quiet please. Jimmy White to Brick. Feeling the crowd are going to clap every shot. Too thick a contact, and I think it's going to be on for Jimmy. to be short Eight. on the red so he could open the pack at the same time but not quite that short so just the eight points Jimmy White eight Jimmy making a similar mistake to the one that Stephen Henry made. <laughs> Jimmy White.
Tonight only scored eight from that leave. How many can Stephen Hendry make? Six. <coughs> Seven. Not quite as straightforward as it might be. Black obstructed to both pockets. Looking to see if he can get on either of those two reds at the moment. just shows you how clear he's thinking though, Ray, to clear one of those reds away that were blocking the black. Below the blue. Well, I'm not so sure about this positional shot. He could have had that much harder and left a red into the right corner. This is difficult. Risky shot there, uh, Red, to play it at that pace. Well, you were talking about clear thinking, Dennis, and it's the most difficult thing to do when you're under this kind of pressure. I suddenly see a chance to score a few. And caution goes to the wind. This one's Eight. far from easy. <laughs> Don't think he's looking at the plant. There's a red next to those two that might just pot into the same pocket that he's taking the black on. I think he's terribly unlucky. That was a super shot he's played. 16. Well, just look at the scores. 17 frames each. 24 points each. Incredible stuff. and cool and I think Jimmy though is going to be tempted into taking a very difficult red to the left corner but he's got to the final taking these difficult reds and he's in the last frame of the final so who's to say he's not right
<laughs> what a shot he's taking on. knew this one was in before we did Dennis what a wonderful shot but the pace he played at that Twenty-nine. Oh. Jimmy White, well, twenty-nine. Did he see the title there, Dennis? Oh, dear me, that was just a little bit of tension. But everybody's tense. Well, he'd miss one of those in 30. Well, he keeps leaving himself the reds into the middle pocket. 16. Skill. And before he played that shot, I was going to say he's missed quite a number of shots with the rest. He doesn't usually. That one only just wriggled in and forced a smile from Stephen Hendry. face then. No explanation needed. Yes, Red would be a, a terrible shame for Jimmy White if he was to lose this frame uh, having missed a, a black that he would never miss in a hundred years. But you can't take it away from 31. this gentleman at the table. Nerves of steel. What's going to happen?
Well, he's proved that he's got it when it was needed. He's proved it in the past. And once again, this evening. Well, Ray, I'm delighted for Stephen Henry, but I could cry for this gentleman sitting in the chair there. Yes, he carries the weight of so many people's hopes. And uh, I'm sure many, as I did, thought that this year was going to be his. But not to take anything away from Jimmy's opponent. Stephen Henry has proved once again that he's the best player in the world. He's Embassy World Championship. He's won by 18 frames to 17 in one of the best finals you're ever likely to see. And obviously, we all remember the black off a spot that he missed. Um, and, uh, you know, I've said many times how, how fast I got out of that chair when he missed it, because I, 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 I feared the worst. I thought, he was gonna, I thought he was gonna win. Got down to the black and just like a rush of blood, I just sort of threw my cue at it, like a twitch. You know, I don't know if you play golf, sort of similar sort of thing, and I rushed it, missed the black, and um, sat in my seat, I just knew that he was going to clear up. I made what was obviously under intense pressure, a clearance which, um, you know, looking back on it, I mean, I made it look pretty easy. I, I wobbled one, one ball with the rest. I mean, it wasn't even a twitch. I mean, you, you admit if you, if you twitched, I just didn't hit it properly. I just didn't, didn't concentrate on it properly. But the good thing about when you do wobble one and it still go in, it sort of clicks your mind into gear and you think, right, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to concentrate 100%. And it was, um, yeah, it was great to, to, to sort of make that clearance. Jimmy's missed black doubtless continues to haunt him, but what a pressure clearance it was from Hendry to win that. His third title in a row, fourth in total, and of course he would go on to win three more to hold the crucible record of crowns at seven. As for Jimmy, millions wanted him to win that day, and they still do, because for all of his brilliant record and proud record in so many other events, Snooker's ultimate prize, the world title, continues to elude him. That was his last Crucible final, or should I say, his most recent. The wait goes on for Jimmy. <laughs>